So it was on this day Lord Nityananda appeared in Eka Chakra. Eka Chakra is over in area called Radha Desh. 
meaning the area where the Ganga does not flow. You go there, you see a little dry, not so much, not so easy for the local people to grow their rice. But when Lord Nityananda appeared there, Eka Chakra was flourishing, was very prosperous. So Lord Nityananda performed his childhood leela there in Eka Chakra Dham. But he saw how his parents, Harayoja and Padmavati, were very deeply attached to him. So it was arranged that a sannyasi would come and deliver him from the entanglement with his parents. <laughs> And Lord Nitai was able to go and travel with the sannyasi and visit many holy places for many years. Just as Lord Nityananda did previously as Lord Balaram. Right? Where Prajendra Nandana says, Sachi Sutta Hailohe Balaram Hailo Nitai. That Lord Nityananda is not different from Lord Balaram. So, 5,000 years ago, during the time of battle of Kurukshetra, Lord Balaram did not take part in the battle. Instead, he went to visit holy places. And so, Lord Nityananda also, by the arrangement of his supreme destiny, he could also go and again and visit all the holy places he had visited previously. So for many years, Lord Nityananda was traveling. But when, it, when the news came of how Lord Chaitanya had begun the Sankirtan movement in, over here in Mayapur, then Lord Nityananda was attracted and he came back, he came here to Mayapur. He wanted to be with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because these two brothers, Gora and Nitai, they're, they're one, but they appear in separate bodies. So Lord Nityananda came back to Mayapur and just next door to our Mayapur temple is the home of Nanda and Acharya. And Lord Chaitanya was telling the devotees, all of his associates, how he'd had a dream. And in the dream he'd seen a wonderful personality who was going to come here to Mayapur. So then, Lord, a, a few days later, Lord Chaitanya told the devotees that he has already come here. You should go and find them. Go and find him. Bring him here. And it was arranged, Srivas and Haridas would go together and look. So Srivas and Haridas went to find out this personality. And they searched the whole day. They went all over Mayapur, all over Navadweep, looking. At the end of the day, they came back and they told Lord Chaitanya, we went everywhere. We went to the homes of the Sudras. We went ev to all the, everywhere we could possibly think. We couldn't find him anywhere. So then Lord Chaitanya said, yes, I will take you. So then in Sankirtan, Lord Chaitanya brought all the devotees to the home of Nandan Acharya. <coughs> and there they saw this wonderful personality, very similar to Lord Goranga, very tall, powerfully built, long arms down to his knees and eyes like lotus petal and long beautiful black hair. And they saw him sitting there chanting the holy names of Lord Krishna. And when Lord Chaitanya saw Lord Nityananda, then of course these two embraced each other in great ecstasy. And they were 
reuniting again to begin the Dharma for the to propagate the Dharma for this age. Right? Lord Chaitanya comes to establish the Sankirtan movement and along with him comes Lord Balaram in the form of Nityananda. So of course together they were having wonderful kirtans in the home of Srivas Pandit every night. But then it came time for Lord Chaitanya to take sannyas. And when he took sannyas, then he invited Harida, he invited Lord Nityananda also. He informed Lord Nityananda of his plan to take sannyas, that he would leave home. So Lord Nityananda also went there to Katwa for Lord Chaitanya's sannyas. And after Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, they all went to Jagannath Puri. Along the way, Lord And Lord Nityananda broke it. And Lord Chaitanya asked, where's my danda? Oh, what happened to Lord Garanga's danda? What to tell? Well, don't remember, when we were having kirtan, we were dancing, and you jumped up, fell on the danda and it snapped. So, hearing this, Lord Goranga was not very pleased that my danda is broken. And anyway, this one pastime, Lord Nityananda did not approve of Lord Chaitanya having the sannyasi rod because Lord Nityananda knows the identity of Lord Chaitanya, that he is the Supreme Lord and he doesn't belong to any particular ashram. That sannyasi rod is a symbol of an ashram. And Lord Chaitanya is transcendental to all the ashrams, just as Lord Nityananda is also Avadut does not belong to any one ashram. He's above all that. He's transcended all these ashram, all the duties of the ashram. Because he's the Supreme Lord, he doesn't have to follow these kind of things. So they came to Jagannath Puri and for some time Lord Chaitanya resided there in Jagannath Puri and at a certain point, Lord Chaitanya requested Lord Nityananda to go back to Bengal and to continue the preaching there because there were so many people still to be delivered. So Lord Nityananda is famous for delivering the fallen souls, just as he had done even before Lord Chaitanya's sannyas. He had approached Jaghai and Madhai. You know, when you go out for preaching, we don't usually think who is the most fallen. But we think, who are the most pious? You know, we think, who will give? You know, we don't think who are the people most in need of the mercy, but we think, who are the ones who are likely to give me some mercy? <laughs> Lord Nityananda, however, his mood is to deliver the fallen souls. And so he thought, if these two drunkards, if these two fallen souls can be made into devotees, then everyone will know the greatness of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Lord Nityananda boldly approached them. And we see from Lord Nityananda, we see that we shouldn't be attached to success because Lord Nityananda, on his first attempt in approaching Jagai and Madhai, he and Haridas had to run for their lives. So it appeared they, were a fa they had failed. But there's no failure in trying to execute Krishna consciousness. 
The important thing is to make the endeavor. Just like I remember devotees were going to Japan. We had no temple, well we, we had a little preaching center in Japan. But the devotees were going, the, the, the very good book, book distributors and street collectors were sent to Japan because the devotees there were collecting funds to build Vrindavan temple and then later on the temple at Juhu, Rasa Bihari temple. Because in the 1970s we didn't have a congregation who were supporting the movement. The temple was maintained by book distribution. And so devotees went to Japan and they collected there. But sometimes people, you know, those of you who do Sankirtan, you know, sometimes you get arrested. You get sometimes difficulty with the authorities. So similarly in Japan, sometimes one or two devotee, one or two devotees would be in difficulty and they'd be deported. So somehow it came in the newspaper that Hare Krishna devotee deported from Japan. This was long ago. And so then Prabhupada's god brother, they said to him, look at this, Hare Krishna devotees deported from the P Japan. Prabhupada said to them, at least we went there. <laughs> you didn't even go there. So this this is the mood of distributing the in the mood of preaching in the mood of Lord Nityananda, that we will go anywhere and everywhere to try to deliver Krishna consciousness. We don't consider who is qualified or who is unqualified. Anywhere and everywhere, we want to give that mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Because Lord Chaitanya is Patita Pavan, he has come to deliver the fallen souls. We have to be willing to take that risk that just like Prabhupada told us about China. He said, don't think everywhere you go you will make devotees. He said, but if the books go there, then it will create the field for preaching. So sometimes we have to be like that. You can't think everywhere you're going to get a lot of devotees, a lot of people to join the movement. You have to be willing to do the groundwork, to distribute the books, to plant the seeds. And we don't know how long it will take before these seeds come up. And we know, just like when you, when you do gardening, you know, sometimes the ground is not very good. And you may put very good seeds in, but they don't come up. The soil is not good. So sometimes the preaching doesn't give such good results. But that doesn't mean we don't preach. We have to try. We have to do, go everywhere and try to distribute this message of Krishna. So Lord Nityananda had that kind of mood. He was a very bold preacher. And he went to Jagai and Madhai, first attempt, not successful, second attempt, struck on the head. But still he is merciful. Lord Nityananda's mood changed in the Kali Yuga. When he, in the previous Yuga, as Lord Balaram, when he went to Naimisharanya and met Roma Harshan Sutta, he took a kusha grass and pierced his heart. He was not impressed with Roma Harshan Sutta, sitting on the Vyasasan, but not willing to offer respect to the Supreme Lord. Lord Balaram considered he's not worthy. He took a kusha grass, pierced the heart. But in the Kali Yuga, Lord Balaram comes as Nityananda and he takes a different mood. 
he takes that cushioned grass between his teeth and he falls at the feet of the fallen souls and he begs them to chant the holy name. The author of Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, describes how he got the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda. And it came in the dream. It is said, Prabhupada said, when, you, when we have dreams about Krishna, and the spiritual master, that this is real, this is factual. So Krishna Das Kaviraj, he describes in the Chaitanya Charitamrita how there was constant kirtan in his home. Every day there would be Sankirtan. And one day, Mini Ketana Ramdas came there by invitation. Mini Ketana Ramdas was one of the great intimate devotees of Lord Nityananda. And he came to the home of Krishna Das Kaviraj. So this Mini Ketana Ramdas is described to be somewhat similar mood to Lord Nityananda. You know, they're in the mood of the cowherd boys. They carry a float and a stake and so Mini Ketana Ramdas, he had his float and when people would bow down to him, he would climb on their back. Sometimes he would mildly slap people's face and like this. He had a, a jovial mood. However, the brother of Krishna Das Kaviraj was a devotee of Lord Chaitanya. He had full faith in Lord Chaitanya, but he did not have faith in Lord Nityananda. And similarly, the priest there in the home of Krishna Das Kaviraj was not much impressed with Miniket and Ramdas and he did not offer respect to him when he came to their home. Chaitanya Charitamrita describes that Mini Ketana Ramdas, when he saw this priest in the home of Krishna Das Kaviraj not respect him, he said, here is the second Romaharshan. He doesn't like to respect the senior Vaishnava. So, Anyway, they had kirtan for some time. After some time, uh, came time to, for Mini Ketana Ramdas to depart from the home. But before the departure, there was some disagreement, some problem there. That this brother of Krishna Das Kaviraj became, he, he got some, he showed some disrespect to Mini Ketana Ramdas. And Mini Ketana Ramdas broke his flute in disgust and left the home. It is said from that time, the brother of Krishna Das Kaviraj fell down. Krishna Das Kaviraj spoke to his brother, telling him that why, why not have faith in Lord Nityananda? You have full faith in Lord Chaitanya. Why don't you have faith in Lord Nityananda? Because they were seeing this mini Ketana Ramdas as a representative of Lord Nityananda. They didn't want to respect him. So Krishna Das Kaviraj told his brother that if you accept one and not the other, that is like the logic of keeping half a hen. The front part eats the food, and the back part lays the eggs. We'll cut off the front part and just keep the back part. That is your logic. Krishna Das Kaviraj told his brother, it's better to be an atheist and reject both brothers than to be a hypocrite and accept one and reject the other. So the brother of Krishna Das Kaviraj could not understand, could not appreciate that. That night Krishna Das Kaviraj in his dream describes how Lord Nityananda appeared in his dream. 
and Lord Nityananda appeared in his dream along with all of his associates. And they were all chanting the holy names of Krishna again and again. Kirtan. Some of the cowherd boys were blowing their uh, bugles and playing flutes. And Lord Nityananda was dressed very beautifully. And Lord uh, Krishna Raskaviraj describes how he fell at the feet of Lord Nityananda. And Lord Nityananda instructed him, Go to Vrindavan. There you will attain everything. So Krishna Das Kaviraj, when he woke up after his dream, he woke up. The, the morning had come and he considered that dream. And he understood that the Lord was instructing him. And immediately he left the home and he went to Vrindavan. There in Vrindavan, he took shelter of Rupa and Raghunath and the other Goswamis. By their mercy, he learned all the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya and he could go on and write the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Krishna does Kaviraj describes himself, he says, Jagai madai haiti muni sher patista puru sher akita haiti muni she papista. He said, I am more sinful than Jagai and Madhai. Anyone who hears my name, they lose their pious activities. Anyone who utters my name, they become sinful. Only the mercy of Lord Nityananda could deliver such an abominable person as myself. This is Krishna Das Kaviraj describing how Lord Nityananda delivered him. Another personality who was delivered by the mercy of Lord Nityananda is Raghunath Das Goswami. Raghunath Das was born in a home of great opulence his family were maintaining all the Brahmins of Bengal. But they were very attached to Raghunath. And Raghunath desired to join Lord Chaitanya's movement. At a certain point, he approached Lord Chaitanya and begged his mercy. Please give me shelter. Let me come with you. But Lord Chaitanya ordered him. Don't act like a crazy person. Go home and behave normally and keep Krishna in your heart. Raghunath went home and took up his life, at the same time maintain, maintaining detachment from the material situation. He pretended to be interested in money. In, in economic development, that the home should be well maintained and developed nicely. And in this way, the mother, his mother and father were happy that our son has become normal now. But internally, he was always thinking, when will I be able to leave this place? So it happened, after some time, Lord Nityananda came to Panihati. And then Lord Nityananda, uh, Raghunath went there to Panihati. And when he came there to Panihati, he saw Lord Nityananda sitting under a big tree on the bank of the Ganges, surrounded by his associates. And when Lord Nityananda saw him, then he said, Ah, Raghunath has come. And he instructed him, Come here, I'm going to punish you. And he placed his lotus feet on the head of Raghunath and he ordered him, I want you to put on a festival for all the, all the devotees. So Raghunath was very happy to get this instruction and he arranged immediately for hundreds of clay pots to be brought there. And he brought also all the flat rice and dahi all the different goods. He brought everything from the market. All the bananas, all the mangoes, the condensed milk, the yogurt. He brought everything. 
and they arranged this big feast at Panihati. Everyone had, was given two clay pots, everybody present, two clay pots. One had uh, shira dahi, w w the dahi with yogurt, and the other was the, the, rather the shira with yogurt and the shira with condensed milk. And before they gave the shira, they first of all boiled it in hot milk. So it was really nectarian shira dahi. You go to Panihati nowadays, what do they give you? And they give you some shira with some gore. <laughs> no dahi, no condensed milk. Because there's no Raghunath to sponsor the feast. But in Lord Nityananda's time, Raghunath was there. And he sponsored everything. He paid for everything. All the vendors came with their bananas and yogurt and mangoes. And they saw, they, they, he took everything, he paid everything to them, paid them for all their goods. And then he gave them prasadam also. They also were given two pots. People were sitting all around Lord Nityananda. There was one platform, it was full with people. People were sitting all along the bank of the Ganges. The bank of the Ganga it was full of people. People were sitting in the Ganga just to eat, just to get the prasadam. And there were 20 men distributing prasadam to all the people. So it was a very wonderful festival. Lord Nityananda was very pleased. And later on he went to the home of Raghava Pandit, took prasadam there. Raghava Pandit's home. Then the next day, he came back and met with Raghunath and told Raghunath that now we bless. Well, first of all, Raghunath actually approached Lord Nityananda through Raghava Pandit, saying that he desired to join Lord Chaitanya. So Lord Nityananda gave the blessing. And with the blessings from Lord Nityananda, then Raghunath was able to, the opportunity came that he could escape from home. Previously, he tried many times. His parents would always capture him and bring him back. But this time, with the blessings from Lord Nityananda and all of the other devotees, he was able to succeed. And he could get to Jagannath Puri and take shelter of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of course, gave him to Swarup Damodar. And he served there in Jagannath Puri, so long as Lord Chaitanya was manifest. Later on, he went to Vrindavan. So it was by the mercy of Lord Nityananda. Without approaching the spiritual master, you cannot just simply get the shelter of Lord Krishna. That is the instruction from this pastime. Lord Chaitanya is Krishna himself. And when Raghunath had come there to Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya told him, behave like a normal person, go home. But once he approached Lord Nityananda, who is the original spiritual master, and got the blessings from Lord Nityananda. With the blessing, then he could be delivered from material life. And when he came to Puri, Lord Chaitanya told him, you're very fortunate. You were in a hole which was full of stool because you were associating with materialistic minded people. Somehow, now you have been delivered from that condition. So, to get freed from material life, it is very important to get the mercy of Lord Nityananda. Naratam Das Thakur also says like that. What is the sign that one has actually achieved the mercy of Lord Nityananda? Arakabe Nitai Chant Karuna Haibe Samsara vasanamor kabi tu chahabi. Right? When material life is no longer attractive, the pleasure of material existence no longer has any meaning for us, 
That is proof you've got the mercy of Lord Nityananda. You can give up all this, the opulence. Raghunath le left everything. Wealth greater than Indra, the king of heaven. A wife who was like an angel. Where is that? You get a wife like an angel, speaks very sweetly, not very common. So he was blessed like that, but it had no meaning for him. He left it all to go to join Lord Chaitanya's movement. Another person who got the mercy of Lord Nityananda was uh, Vrindavan Das Thakur. When we go to Mamagachi, we see the birthplace of Vrindavan Das Thakur. Vrindavan Das Thakur was the son of Narayani, the mother Narayani, who was the niece of Srivas Pandit. So Narayani said as a child she had ate the remnants of Lord Chaitanya. The Gauragonadish Dapika said, Narayani eternally eats the remnants of Lord Chaitanya. She was the mother of Vrindavan Das Thakur. And Vrindavan Das Thakur is the Vyasa of Chaitanya Lila. He, had, he compiled the Chaitanya Bhagavad. He describes himself as the last disciple of Lord Nityananda. And he composed so wonderfully the Chaitanya Bhagavat, describing all the early pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his activities. So Lord Nityananda, when he came here to Mayapur, he would often live, in, he would usually live in the home of Srivas Pandit. There was one wonderful pastime which took place while he was living there. There were many wonderful pastimes, but I wanted to tell you about one particular pastime. One day, the wife of Srivas Pandit Malini was polishing the brass, the paraphernalia of her husband, which he uses to worship the deities, to worship Krishna. But one day, a crow came and got up one of the little pots which her husband offered ghee to Krishna in and took it up in his beak and flew away with that little katuri, we would call it katuri, little pot, brass pot, right? And when the crow flew away with it, Malini was so upset because she thought, oh, my husband will be angry, he will chastise me. I'll get the blame, I didn't take care, I let the bird come and steal one of the pots for the worship of Krishna. Oh, it's, what am I going to do? How will I ever tell my husband that his paraphernalia has been stolen? She began to cry. And Lord Nityananda was living there and he saw her crying and he asked her, my dear mother, what is wrong? And she said, she told him, this, I was polishing my husband's paraphernalia for his puja, and the crow came, took it, flew away. At that time, the crow came back without the container. So Lord Nityananda said, told his mother, don't worry, we'll get it back. And he, Lord Nityananda, he is the super soul also in the heart of all living entities. So he told the crow, bring that container back immediately. And the crow flew away, and a little while later it came back with that pot in its mouth. So when the crow came back with that pot, Mother Malini fainted. She was so overjoyed and overwhelmed by the situation. And when she recovered, she offered wonderful prayers to Lord Nityananda. And in her prayers she describes, she said, for one who can bring back the, his guru, uh, one, who can bring a, one who can bring back the dead son of his guru, then it's not very difficult to bring back a clay pot. 
<laughs> because earlier, in, in his previous incarnation as Lord Balaram, along with Lord Krishna, they had gone to Sandipani Muni and studied in the ashram, right? It, now it's called Ujjain, used to be called Avantipur. And Lord Krishna and Balaram had stayed there for 64 days. And they had learned all the 64 arts from Sandipani Muni. So then they wanted to give Guru Dakshin to him. So he understood that these are very special students. And he told them, some time ago my son had passed away at Prabhakshetra over in Saurashtra near Dwarka. He had left the body. Bring him back to me. So Krishna and Balaram immediately went there. And they found that what had happened, that there was some demon there, Panchajanya, residing in the sea. They killed the demon, but they did not find the body of their guru. So then they went to Yamaraj. And they found that the, bod the, the, the guru's son was there in Yamaloka with Yamaraj. So they told Yamaraj they wanted to take that boy away. And of course Yamaraj immediately brought him. And Krishna and Balaram brought him back to Sandipani Muni. So this was the pastime of Lord Balaram and Krishna. So to bring back a little pot, not a very big thing. Mother Malini went on to say how you're maintaining the 14, all the 14 planetary systems are maintained on your hoods, just like a mustard seed. So it's not a very big thing for you to bring back this little pot. We know Mother Yamuna, at one point when you had become intoxicated, the Yamuna River came and offered obeisances to you. So to get a crow to follow your order is not very difficult. If even the Yamuna is obedient to you. Right? Lord Balaram had been drinking Varuni. And at one t so then he, he ordered the Yamuna to come here. I want to bathe in your water. And the Yamuna didn't move. So then Lord Balaram, because he was intoxicated, he took his plow and he began to break the Yamuna into the little streams. So at that time, the deity came from Yamuna and offered her obeisances to Lord Balaram and apologized that I'm sorry, I didn't realize your actual identity. So this is the position of Lord Nityananda. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But he has come in the mood of the devotee. And he is just delivering the fallen souls, going everywhere preaching Krishna, telling everyone, read the books about Krishna, worship Krishna, and chant the names of Krishna. We want to take up that mood of Lord Nityananda. Uh, Sukadeva Goswami is speaking in Srimad Bhagavatam. He'd been asked to describe the creation, but before he began, he first of all offered prayers. And one of the verses he describes Kireta Hunandra Palinda Pokesha Abira Shumba Yavana Kashadaya. Yanye chapapa yadapashraya shraya shidyanti tasmai prabhavishnave namaha. Sukadeva Goswami is describing different sinful races around the planet. Kirita, Africans. Hunandra, Europeans. Pulinda, Pukish, like the Kashadaya, the Chinese are there also. The whole planet, sinful practically, right? So Sukadeva Goswami mentions all these sinful races and he said, they can all be delivered by the mercy of the devotees of the Lord. So Lord Nityananda is 
inspiring all of us to deliver this message of Krishna consciousness. It is said the spiritual master should either be an associate, take part in the, in the pastime of Krishna with the gopis, or he should be a follower of Lord Nityananda in the Sankirtan movement. So Lord Nityananda's Sankirtan party, with his cowherd boys, they come. They come here to Bengal with his party, all of his associates, great devotees. They came back, Lord Chaitanya sent them back from Puri. They came, they stayed at, first of all, Panihati. They were there for three months. So they didn't eat. They forgot all about eating for three months. They were just chanting and dancing. And even the children were joining the Sankirtan movement. Even the children became also cowherd boys. Lord Nityananda delivered also the children to Krishna consciousness. So this is Lord Nityananda. On this day we are praying, we can also develop some attachment to serve in Lord Nityananda's Sankirtan movement. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. You are very kind. <laughs> so we'll go for darshan.